for complete beginners. In these lessons I'm going to take you from just getting hold of your tenor banjo with no idea what to do with it to the point where you can play quite a few chords and be able to read those chords from a chart and play along with songs that you'd like to play. Just before we start it is worth mentioning that the tenor banjo has two common tunings um, so we need to make sure we're in the same one. I'm going to be teaching C, G, D, a tuning, which is sometimes called standard tuning or jazz tuning. You'll find that some tenor banjo players, those who tend to play Irish traditional music, will tune G, D, A, E, which is the same notes as you'd find on a fiddle or a mandolin. If your banjo is tuned G, D, A, E, then please don't try and tune it to these notes without getting the correct set of strings. Your strings will be too heavy and if you try and tune them up to the pitch that I'm at, then, well, something will break, hopefully only a string, but we don't want to do any damage to our instruments. So make sure you've got the right tuning and the right strings for it. Talking of tuning, let's get our banjo in tune. For now, don't worry about what you're plucking the strings with. We'll look at the plectrum in a moment, but just you can just pluck them with your thumb. These are the notes we're tuned to. The lowest string, which is the one nearest to the ceiling in your playing position, or nearest to your nose, is a C. The next string, going down towards the floor, is a G. The next string is a D. And the one closest to the floor is an A. Now hopefully you're all in tune with me. You can of course use a little clip-on tuner and clip that on your headstock. Or you might find an app for your phone that will listen to you play and a little needle will tell you whether you're in tune or not. Now the tenor banjo is a really powerful rhythm instrument. It's of course able to play melodies and lots of people do, but it really comes into its own when it's driving the rhythm of a band. And that band could be playing anything. It's commonly associated with jazz music, but maybe ragtime music, jug band music, the tenor banjo crops up a lot. You can play all kinds of music on here. And the banjo is a key part of the rhythm section. So to start with, we're going to look at our right hand and get that working properly first. You're going to need a plectrum, or for my friends in the US, a pick, just like a guitar pick. Don't get one that's too floppy and thin. Get one that's reasonably rigid, but, but don't go mad to start with. You want one with a little bit of flex in it. I think this one is a, a 1.8 millimeter thick pick. So reasonably thick and stiff, but it's still got a bit of give in it. This is how we hold the pick. Take your hand, fold your fingers in very loosely like that. Almost like you're trying to hold like, I don't know, a golf ball or something in there. Place the pick on top of your index finger and then bring your thumb down over it. You shouldn't see lots of pick sticking out. It should really just be a tiny little amount. Just proud of the tip of your index finger there. Don't grip it too hard. Now if you've never used a pick before that might feel a bit odd so I recommend just having a pick in your pocket and when you're walking around putting it in the correct position and while you're just pottering around the house or you're going to put the kettle on and things like that have it in your hand. Get used to holding it not squeezing it tight but not dropping it. You'll find as you start to play it will move around in your hand and you'll start to think, oh no, this is annoying, we have to grip it tighter. But you'll eventually find that point where you don't drop it, but you're not giving it that death grip. So let's have a look what our right hand does. We're going to be resting our arm. Quite often you'll find a little arm rest on some banjos. I don't have one on this one, but you might have a little arm rest to stop these hooks digging into your arm. But you rest your arm on the top 
and you can rest any bit of your arm really depending on where you want your hand to fall. You'll find that sometimes you'll strum up here and sometimes you'll strum down there, you'll get different sounds. For now, just aim somewhere around the head towards the neck a little bit. That's a good kind of default position. And then I want you to just rest your hand over the strings or put a towel over the strings just so we don't hear any sound at all. We just want to hear the rhythm of the banjo. Keep your wrist loose and we're going to just strum down across all four strings in a relaxed way. Okay, for our first lesson that's as complicated as strumming is going to get. Though we do need to keep our wrists nice and relaxed for when we do more complicated strumming later. Also, try and arch your wrist a little bit. If you have your wrist flat, then you're trying to move your hand up and down like that. And that's not a very natural or comfortable movement. Whereas if you arch your wrist, we can swing it back and forth, which is much more relaxed. So move your forearm on the edge of the banjo to find where you're going to rest your arm and let your wrist flop forward. And then you can jiggle around and find a nice comfortable position where you've got a bit of an arch, but not too much, and you're not strumming right up here. Find a nice comfortable position like that. One, two, three, four. There we go. Really work on keeping that even. One, two, three, four. If you don't possess a metronome, now might be a good time to get one. You can get them as free apps on your phone. You don't even have to pay for one, but you can get a little electronic one for just a few pounds. Okay. Now let's have a look at the left hand. What we're going to be doing on the banjo is playing all of the strings, at least to begin with, and holding down some of the strings so that they're made shorter by these metal frets going across the fingerboard. And when we do that, we can change which collection of notes we hear when we strum. A collection of notes is a chord. And these little patterns we tend to call chord shapes because we make a nice little shape with our fingers. I'm going to show you your first chord shape now. Take your first finger, your index finger, and place it on the second string. Now, we count our strings from the floor to the ceiling, like the rungs of a ladder. So our first string is the A string nearest the ground, the high string. So put your index finger on the second string, and we want it just that side of the fret wire, the second piece of fret wire. So there's the first one, there's the second one. We want to be just a little bit that way behind it. Then take your second finger and place that just behind the third fret on the first string. Your fingers should look like this. Second fret, third fret. And we can show that as a little chord diagram which looks like this. Now that diagram is showing you what it would look like if you took your banjo and held it in front of you and looked and the horizontal lines would be your nut here where the strings rest and all the others would be the frets and the vertical lines are the strings just like that. So if you see a chord diagram and you're not sure get your banjo and hold it in front of you and that diagram will match up exactly with it. And that C chord would look like the diagram we have here. So get your fingers on that C chord and rather than strum, play each string one at a time starting with your lowest string. Now if any of those strings aren't ringing out, they're doing this. Have a look and make sure that you're only touching one string with each finger and your finger isn't leaning over and touching a string next to it. Also make sure that you're just behind the fret and not right on top of the fret because then you'll be stopping that string vibrating. And also that you're not too far behind the fret the other way because then you would have to squeeze a lot harder to get a nice clean tone and we don't really want to squeeze hard. Now 
Now I've hidden these two fingers here out of the way so that you can see, but try not to do that. Just let them hover around up here, ready for the next chord. So when I'm hiding them out of the way to show you chords, that's not really how you play them. That's just me trying to get them out of the camera's way. So just let them hover around. They're gonna be needed for other chords later. Let's try playing a rhythm with that C chord. Just downward strums with a nice loose wrist, like this. Now this chord is called C. You'll also sometimes see it called C major. It's one of those things in music that there are different kinds of chord, like major and minor, but when we see a major chord, it's assumed. So when you see the letter C for a chord, it really means C major, but we don't really call it that. Don't worry about these words. As we encounter different types of chord, we'll have a look at them, we'll talk about how they work, and then we'll start listening to the sounds of them and you'll soon pick up how different types of chords have different sounds and different jobs. Now our second chord. Now we're going to try and move that chord across one string. So they're going to stay in the same relative position to each other and they're going to stay in the same frets, but we're just going to hop them both one string towards the ceiling. So now we have our index finger in the second fret third string and our second finger in the third fret on the second string. And now there's nothing holding down that first string anymore. Let's play through it one at a time. Now this one can be a bit trickier because you've got to make sure that your fingers are arched over nicely so that you're not touching that first string that's got to ring out without a finger on it. If you get this, probably means that your fingers are a bit too flat. We need to arch them over. If you've got long fingernails, I'm afraid they're gonna have to be cut because you need to be pointing your fingertips towards the wood of the fingerboard rather than using the flat pads of your fingers. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to get a clean sound. Now that's the chord of F. So that's an F major, but we don't call it F major, we just say F. Let's move between those two chords. When you move between them, I actually want you to try and move both fingers together. Keep that shape in your hand and just lift them off a little bit, move them and pop them down again. Now all the time we're doing this, if you look at my left hand, I'm not gripping the neck. What we really don't want to be doing is having to make our fingers bend back to get to these chords. And if you wrap your thumb round, you'll find you really have to bend your fingers to an extreme to get to these. So make sure that you keep your thumb round the back. You can still see your thumb peeking over, but what we're really after is space here. You see, I can put my finger through there. Don't let the neck drop in to this bit of your hand here. We don't need to do it. We don't need to support the neck, so we can just be touching with our thumb on the back and our fingertips on the front. Let's see if we can move between C and F. We're going to do four strums on C and four strums on F. And we're going to try to not stop strumming. So we have to start thinking about the next chord and preparing to move before we actually need to do it. So here we go. One, two, three, four, C chord. Two, three. Now change your chord now. That's quite tricky to do. Change back. Change again. And back. Now if you find that hard to do, don't do this. Because we need to keep this rhythm going. That's the heart and soul of the music. That's what keeps the music sounding like music. We need to keep that rhythm going. So if you're having trouble changing, slow the whole thing down. Doesn't matter how slow you have to go, as long as that rhythm stays nice and even. So give yourself time. You can build up your speed gradually as you get more comfortable. 
We're going to have one more chord in this lesson before we finish, and it's the chord of G. For the chord of G, we hold down the fourth string at the second fret with our index finger. And then we hold down the first string also at the second fret with our second finger. It looks like this. Let's strum through it. Again, be careful that that index finger isn't laying flat and touching the strings next to it. Now this is what you need to practice before the next lesson. We're going to go from C to F to G and back to C again. But then I'd like you to mix up the order when you're practicing. So sometimes you're going from C to F, sometimes you're going from C to G. Just play around with it, whichever order you want, just to get your fingers used to playing all these chords. And remember, at the moment, we're only using two fingers, our index finger and our second finger. Here we go. Start with a C, then an F, and then our new G chord. One, two, three, four. C. C and start again. Here's the F, G, and C. Now don't worry if you can't do that yet. Remember what I said, slow it down, try and keep this hand regular, doesn't matter how slow it is, as long as it keeps on going. And remember you'll have to let go of a chord and give yourself time to get to the next one. So as soon as you've done the fourth strum, that's when you should be letting go of that chord and moving your hands to the new chord. And remember, don't let go and then start again from scratch, particularly with your C and your F. You can just move those two fingers over as a unit. So they both hop up and they both go down together and that makes for a much quicker chord change. Congratulations, you're playing the tenor banjo. Now don't worry if you don't sound like me and if some of your chords sound a little bit duff and sometimes your rhythm goes off, this is all part of learning to play an instrument. So take your time with it, go slowly and practice little and often. And when I see you again, you'll be able to play those three chords nice and evenly and confidently. And then we can move on to more music. I'll see you again soon. Take care. Goodbye.